This is Chris, and welcome to the first episode of Ask Dustis. That's right, guys. It's the 2,000 subscriber Q&A. Uh, you ended up sending in more questions uh, than I expected. I divided it into a couple sections. Uh, I think I'm going to go ahead and uh, do the video game and Smash questions first. Uh, I'm going to start with Smash, just get that out of the way. So if you're only here for Smash, D don't worry, you can click away after the first five minutes. However, if you're genuinely interested in me, like as a person, uh, I'm flattered, but I don't think I'm ready for that right now. So starting off with Smash, uh, what is your most wanted character for Smash? There are four characters I have wanted uh, since Melee, and we have never gotten any of them. It's, it's, it's funny, like, I'm happy with every roster when it comes out, but, like, genuinely, my four most wanted characters have never actually happened. Uh, and that is uh, Tingle from The Legend of Zelda. That is Geno from Mario or Square Enix, depending on which way you want to slice it. And I'd say those two are probably the ones that I want the most. Uh, but then right below it, uh, it would be Isaac from Golden Sun and Ray, Mark, whatever Ray you want it to be. Specifically, the one from the GameCube Custom Robo is, uh, is the one that I know uh, and really wanted. Uh, it doesn't really look like uh, Custom Robo is going to happen. It looks like that series is dead. It looks like Isaac's just going to be an assist trophy, which at least he's a cool assist trophy. But man, I hope he's in the next one. Uh, I still have some hope for Gino and Tingle. Tingle's in there on a stage, but like, they've made weirder things work before. We got Piranha Plant and Joker from the Persona series, so like, hey, everything's on the table. Give me Bialystok and Bloom as a duo fighter, please, with uh, Uma Thurman as an assist trophy. Thank you very much. Good dog, me, Vanen. <laughs> Good dog, me, Vanen. When is Uncle Gareth coming to Smash? I don't know, probably as soon as it breaks at least a thousand views. If you could take one character out of Smash, who would it be? I don't really want to remove anybody, but like, if we had to take somebody out, uh, I'd honestly probably go with like, Dark Pit, or Dr. Mario, or Pichu, just one of the, just one of the, uh, Echoes, or Daisy probably would actually be the first one I'd go for. Uh, cause, yeah, it's an Echo, but also, God, she made people so horny and I don't like it. If you consider the Echoes to be cheating, uh, then when it comes to like actual characters, I'd probably go with one of the Pokemon. There are a couple Pokemon in there where it's like, they're not really like a vital important character to gaming, you know? Um, I, I think that Pokemon is where you see like the least impactful characters just because of the way that Pokemon works. Uh, if not Pokemon, probably one of the Fire Emblem characters. Uh, probably Roy, if I had to do, go with a Fire Emblem character. I, I like playing as the Fire Emblem characters, and Roy is probably one of my favorite to play as, but just in terms of viewing the roster as, like, a celebration of Nintendo, that's just where I feel like he, the characters kind of fulfill it the least. If Minecraft were to get a DLC stage with the Ender Dragon as a boss, but not Steve as a playable character, who do you think would fight the Ender Dragon in Classic Mode? Rob. Now that Smash Ultimate has been out for a bit, what are your thoughts and what would you do different if you were in charge? I think it's the best Smash game they've made. It's It feels so good. So many of the additions are just like really, really nice. The the way that it like punches in and like slows down when you land like the final blow, but then you can still you can still DI out of it, but like anytime it gets close, just a lot of little stuff like that is really nice. A lot of the new extra modes are really cool. The, the, the one thing, just the one thing is the online uh, as, as, as usual. The netcode, not great. Uh, I, I've only played online once. Granted, it was with some of you guys, actually. I did a stream and we were playing some of you online. And, uh, it was bad lag. Then I put in the Ethernet cable and it actually fixed it for quite a while until certain people joined and then they brought a lot of lag with them. So, like, yeah, just better netcode would be amazing. Um, but as far as, like, the actual design goes, some of the online options are just really obtuse. It shouldn't be as difficult to just kind of set up a room for all your friends to play and then like change stuff when you want to like having to close down the room and all that is just kind of dumb but like some of the online stuff is just unwieldy and I, and I think it could be streamlined a bit better but when it comes to like the actual mechanics I... other than like adding characters that I want like I, I don't think there's anything I would change about it I just really like what they've made Bring back Poke Floats. Just bring back Poke Floats, please. Now that's all the Smash questions. I'm just gonna go into some uh, normal video game questions now. Uh, what is your favorite video game ever? I can tell you my favorite series are like Zelda, Final Fantasy, Phoenix Wright, uh, Fire Emblem, like stuff like that. But narrowing it down to specific games, like like with Zelda, it's like a toss up between Link to the Past, Wind Waker, and Majora's Mask. That's what my answer's been for a long time. Is like between those three, like I can't pick like a winner, but those are the three I can always go back to. But now Breath of the Wild is like, I love Breath of the Wild, but it's also not really a game that I think is fit for replaying, so I can't, 
It's not a game I can go back and just play over and over again. But, I've been keeping my file going for like 200 hours now, so... I think the original Phoenix Wright trilogy is just some of the best writing, like, ever. Comedic-focused writing, I would say, but also just good mystery writing. I'm not as into, like, later games in the series. The first Edgeworth game was actually pretty good, but like, the original Phoenix Wright trilogy... Oh! As far as Final Fantasies go, uh, I, I think 9 is my personal favorite, but I also really like 7 and 15. 10's got, like, some of the best gameplay in the series, I think. that I think the character progression in 10 is, like, the best in the series. But if I had to pick a personal favorite out of Final Fantasy, I think it would be 9. Whew, it's hard, though. There's, there's stuff that I really like about 15, though. Also, some stuff I'm not a huge fan of in 15. What's so fascinating about Final Fantasy is that I, I feel like it's really pitchy, where they change so much from game to game that, like, I can pick out stuff that I don't like in games, but still go, like, this stuff is so well done. I think 9 is the one that I felt most solidly throughout, though. 7 is also... 7 and 9, I think, are actually about equal. I just personally prefer the stuff in 9 more. There's also a lot of indie games that I'm a huge fan of, though. I also really, really like Mother 3, but I feel like I played through it so recently that I need more time to digest it. Oh, there's also so many other good games, though. Like, I love the Ico series. Uh, Ico, Shadow of Colossus, Last Guardian. I think they're all great. My personal favorite might be Ico? Or Ico? Uh, how do you want to pronounce it? Actually, what's the most played on Steam? Clicker Heroes! The answer is Clicker Heroes! Clicker Heroes! My favorite game of the all time. Most hours I've put into any game, ever. Oh man, Final Fantasy XIV as well, but that's like an MMO. It's, it's hard to compare that to the rest of the series, but it's real good. Do you care about Warhammer 40k? I've never played it. It's a series that I have several games from it, just from like Humble Bundles and stuff, and I've looked at it, and like I vaguely know about the universe a bit, and like what it's about, and it seems like something I would like, but it's so big, it like intimidates me. That's what she said! <laughs> I feel like at some point I will jump into it because I have this incredibly horrendous goal of wanting to just play every game that's significant in any way. And uh, Warhammer 40k is a pretty significant series, and I've never touched it. I'm now curious what your thoughts on Bioshock Infinite are that you scrapped a video on it. I feel like Bioshock Infinite is a very um, dishonest game. I think it does a lot of kind of browbeating the player into thinking it's saying something really intelligent and smart, but if you pick it apart, like, there's really nothing there. Uh, it uses a lot of, like, really big themes, um, to kind of wow people, but none of it's propped up with anything. It's like the huge buildings in Pyongyang. It's amazing, because, like, a, a lot of, like, my favorite YouTubers, uh, that, like, I follow on here, like, you know, they did reviews of Bioshock Infinite, either when it came out or later as retrospectives, and they almost unanimously are just praising it as, like, this is art! I'm just looking at it, I'm just like, no, it's really not. It looks gorgeous, though. But then when you get into the gameplay, I also feel like the gameplay is also just very poorly designed. Uh, and like a, like a, I feel like it's a big step back in like the series, and I, the reason we were gonna make a video about it is because, you know, that and Last of Us were like the big games that year. Colby got Last of Us, and we were both like pleasantly surprised with how good Last of Us was. So we were like, all right, you know what? Like, let's get Bioshock Infinite as well. So we walked to GameStop, and we brought it back, we played straight through it in one sitting, and we immediately took it back and just like returned it. It's just like, we didn't... what is this? And we recorded that whole playthrough. I just so incredibly disappointed with pretty much everything about it. Character development was really shoddy, the themes are all over the place, it openly contradicts itself and the way that its time travel works. Which is bizarre, because the original Bioshock did so much better on like every one of those fronts. What video game do you have the earliest fond memories of? It's gonna be a hodgepodge here. So I grew up with a NES and a uh, Sega Genesis and later on a, um, a Super Nintendo. And so I do remember specifically playing uh, Zelda 2 or Adventure of Link, whatever, and uh, Link to the Past with my mom. I also remember playing Sonic 2 all the time with, uh, with friends and everything because you could do a co-op. Um, and I think those are answers you guys probably expected. Here's a blast from the past. Uh, have any of you heard of Crystal's Ponytails? Crystal's Ponytails is like a puzzle platformer on the Sega Genesis. Um, I was definitely not the target demographic for that. Outside of like being a young child, I guess. But I do remember, uh, as like probably my first puzzle-oriented game, I got pretty obsessed with it, just trying to figure out like, what do I gotta get to be able to go here and to beat this? And, uh, that consumed me for quite a while as a child. So I think, in general, those are the earliest memories. Uh, then there's stuff, like, a bit later on, when I was, like, six to eight years old. Like, after the divorce, I remember getting a Game Boy, I remember playing, uh, 
Pokemon, uh, Pokemon Red was the one that I, it was the first game I bought with my own money. I did a Thanks Gaming video on it, like, years ago. Um, I remember having early memories about that. I remember, like, Super Bomberman I played a lot of on the Super Nintendo. Those are the ones that come into focus most clearly for me, are just those early, uh, NES and Super Nintendo and Genesis games. Aladdin on the Genesis as well. I played a lot of that. Mario Tennis Series or Mario Golf Series? I like them both, I like tennis more. On the Nintendo 64, they had a Mario Tennis game, which was great. Uh, both Mario Tennis and Mario Golf on the Nintendo 64 were great games. However, they both had uh, Game Boy counterparts, where you had like an RPG. I think they both had it. I only had the Mario Tennis one. There might not have been a Mario Golf one, I think that there was. And you would do like this single player like RPG sports adventure game uh, on your Game Boy. And build a character and like change out his rackets and customize stats and everything, and then you could put it in the in the adapter on the back of the Nintendo 64. You could get like an adapter for it. You could put your character in the actual Mario Tennis game on the 64 and have it in 3D, and it was just it was it was glorious. And I think since then, Mario Tennis has been one of those series I've like always pined for to like kind of have a comeback and do something like that again. Um, I haven't gotten Mario Tennis Aces yet. I, I liked the demo. Um, I heard some people were disappointed in the single player, but like. If it's fun to play with people, that, that's all I really care about. But I would love for them to do that, like, kind of two-game connection thing that they did, like, back on the 64. Are we ever gonna return to Westside Zarky? Oh, you better ready your ass, Matt. We are back in Zarky. We've been there. We've been going back there. We've been wondering where you were. Are you been MIA? It's your fault. But yes, please come back. I want to do some more gang shit. So with all the video game related questions out of the way, uh, we're gonna go into, like, personal questions. These range from stuff about my life to stuff about movies. Uh, I included the movies in here because there weren't enough movie questions to, like, justify it being its own thing. So, they're in here under personal, because it's about my personal opinion. Which I guess the video games were, but... What do you want from me? Consistent theming? Since when have I done that? Question one! How's your day? Nobody ever asks, why is your day? It's going alright. Um, things have been... <sighs> it's been a rough year, uh, but, like, mostly, like, the last few months has been, like, really rough. And so... Uh, just learning how to work around it and get myself motivated to do things anyways. Um, getting up and doing this video, for example, uh, has taken me longer than I wanted it to, but I got myself up and I'm doing it, uh, so I'm counting that as a win. Wackiest high school moment. Oh, buddy. So in between my junior and senior years, uh, I went to Scotland with a couple other people from my theater group and we performed a, a show there. And I specifically remember, uh, advertising the show and handing out uh, flyers for it uh, while standing on a pylon uh, on, uh, on, on, a, on a street in Scotland in Edinburgh dancing on the pylon and like doing little kicks and like handing off flyers to people I got a picture of it somewhere I also had this like huge brown sweatshirt that was way too large for me I think it was like an extra large and I was a I was a smaller person back then than I am now I'm still not a very big person but like back then super small I would put my entire body inside it, I would just kind of sit down and pull it over my legs and put my head in and I would just be a brown ball on the ground. That was a thing I did for some reason. Might not be my wackiest though, I did a lot of weird stuff with Isaac. Um, we did a lot of fake makeouts in front of people. Uh, one time he spiked my head on like the, the, the corner of a chair that was like jutting up like this and he gave me like an actual concussion and I passed out for a bit. But it was all good for the laughs. I also remember uh, ice blocking. Uh, with, uh, with my friend uh, Lemming and a bunch of other people. Just took a bunch of ice blocks up to a grassy hill and we would just uh, put a towel on them and sit on it and just ride these ice blocks down the hill. And afterwards, we built like a structure out of the ice blocks and called it the, uh, the, the Ice Mecca and we made a cult around it, took a bunch of pictures. I wrote a musical uh, about a bunch of homeless people who uh, become a pirate and it was initially a Billy Joel uh, jukebox musical. That changed into being like, a, like, like, like an original musical later on. Um, I go back and read that every now and then, and god damn. Back then, I just thought that writing was like putting one-liner after one-liner after one-liner, and a lot of those one-liners did not deserve to be one-liners. Every now and then, though, there's like a joke in there that's like genuinely clever or good, and it's like, eh, could be worse. I also called it Bum Pirates, which, uh, I didn't realize why that was a bad idea, um, but man, in hindsight, that's, uh, when is your birthday? Can you think of any celebrities that share the same birthday as you? Yes, January 3rd. Uh, if you count YouTubers as celebrities, Gerard Khalil, the completionist. We have the same birthday. It's funny because me and like the other people in like the TOBG community, the Beard Boys or whatever, uh, going back like, like 
four or five years at this point. I I've made some really good friends through that community. And uh, whenever we go to conventions and like we see Gerard, uh, at any of his panels, we just sh wish him a happy birthday even when it's not his birthday. Happy birthday! Happy birthday! <laughs> so yeah, birthdays are fun. Where did you get the name Adustus from? I, I needed to change it from my, from my stupid childhood uh, screen names to something that sounded a bit less ridiculous. It didn't need to not sound ridiculous, it just needed to not sound like I thought I was being a badass for using it. Uh, but I still wanted to keep something jackal related, and uh, Adustus is like the Latin like species name uh, for the side-striped jackal. Uh, it's the Canis Adustus, and so I was like, there, I can kind of keep something jackal related and keep it in that wheelhouse without it sounding like awful. Uh, that was done after months of trying to like think of a name uh, with Will, uh, one of my like best friends online. Yeah, we kicked it around for a long time. He came up with Adustus, and I was like, yeah. It's the best we could think of, uh, and I actually, it's, it's, it's grown on me. I think it's nice, I think it works as a name for all of the kind of content that I make, both the weird stuff and, like, the, the more serious stuff. It also works as a name for a collective, which is another thing I wanted to do, um, is kind of have this channel be more than just me. I'm kind of succeeding in that respect, but not as much as I want to. How was meeting Quits and Reviews? I really liked it, it was a lot of fun. It, it was cool seeing him and getting to see that, like, he was the kind of person I thought he was. I've talked before about authenticity and, uh, or the lack thereof on the platform, and, uh, one thing I liked about Quentin's content was that he seemed very authentic, and I was like, I think that you actually are the person you're putting out here. Obviously, there's parts of it that are played up for, you know, entertainment's sake, but, like, I never feel like he's lying or saying something he doesn't believe. And so it was cool to just get to hang out and just, like, joke around with him and be like, yeah, no, like, I do have a feel for who you are off of your videos, and that's like a really cool thing to actually feel. Because it, it, it doesn't always work out that way when you, when you meet somebody from online, especially a content creator. Uh, it was also interesting to just kind of talk to him and see, like, where his head's at about some things, because, like, he's really young. That's something I always find interesting, is like, you know, like, YouTube kind of encourages people to get into the limelight at a younger age, and, you know, people are still developing at that point, you know, people aren't, people aren't who they're going to be for the rest of their lives by the time that people are watching them, um, and so it's interesting to see them kind of go through that growing up process. I feel like Quentin is one of the people who handles it a lot better than most. There's been a lot of controversy, uh, around him lately, and it's just, it's just stupid. I'm definitely not, like, close to him in that I can, like, go offer him advice or anything, uh, but I just kind of hope he pulls through things, um, I have faith that he's going to come through everything. He's one of my favorite people on the platform. I really don't watch that much YouTube anymore because I just don't like the direction it's gone, really. But he is one of the people that I that I like watching, and it was nice to meet him in person and kind of get validation that, like, yeah, this is genuinely, like, the person that you think it is. How did Critical end up being an Uncle Gareth? I fucking asked him, dude. Back then, he was, like, doing, like, some minor voice acting in games and stuff, and he had made a video uh, talking about how he wanted to do more voice acting, and, uh, he had an email out there where people could, like, send questions and stuff, this is when he was, he wasn't smaller profile, because, like, he's always been a big channel, he was approaching it from, like, a different kind of angle at that point. Like, I don't know if I could get him to, to voice, uh, that character in the movie, uh, if I went and talked to him about it today. Uh, I don't think I could even get through to him, I think he has a lot more important stuff going on. So, you know, we, we shot the movie, and, like, there was always going to be a voice on the other end of that walkie-talkie, but we didn't have it on set because, like, you don't you don't do that. Uh, so I like recorded like filler filler lines for like what I thought would be funny, and I realized that I was just doing a critical impression. And so I just emailed him and I was just like, "Hey, like we're shooting this thing." He responded to it. He said he was like, "Yeah, I'm totally down for that." Uh, like a week later, uh, I brought him in a Skype call and uh, talked to him just about the script and what we were doing and the kind of stuff. This is Troutman. I have a suspect. You're not a real cop, Bob. But I have these, like, recordings of him, like, just saying, like, a lot of weird shit that we didn't end up putting in. He has a nose. I'm pretty sure eyebrows are there, too. From the report, she likes coconuts and beavers. She has a bicycle. She grew up in a house. She had a family, a father and a mother. She's got shoes and she knows how to tie them because she's eight and she learned how to do that. I don't know if he's seen the movie. Um, I kind of doubt it. Uh, I did send it to him, uh, but I never got a response. It's extremely possible that, like, in between the time that he recorded his lines and the movie actually came out, 
uh, that he just kind of forgot about it. And I don't blame him, he has like a lot of stuff going on. Um, some of his fans have found the movie, uh, which I've found interesting, uh, but as far as I can tell, he hasn't seen it. Uh, these two questions kind of go hand in hand, uh, excited for any upcoming movies, and worst movie you've seen this year. I feel like I can't really answer the latter, I actually don't, I don't see that many movies. I'm trying to remember, oh, worst movie I've seen this year, Final Fantasy XV King's Glaive. It didn't come out this year, uh, but that's the only movie I can remember watching this year and just being like, what, it, what is this? What I will say though, Into the Spider-Verse is an incredible movie, y'all should go see it. I was lucky enough to see it uh, an early screening about a week early, because uh, I got big friends in the film industry. Meaning, I know a guy in the Editor's Guild. Aside for any upcoming movies, Detective Pikachu. It looks like they're just going ham with like how ridiculous it is, and I'm fine with that. I, I don't need it to be a serious movie. Other than that, uh, Creed 2 is technically already out, but I need to go see it. I am excited for that. I've only got a couple questions left. They're all kind of random. Uh, what are your thoughts on bacon numbers, degrees of separation, and websites like oracleofbacon.org? I don't really have any thoughts on it. Um, I don't really attach any significance to uh, degrees of separation or Kevin Bacon as a whole, really. I, I guess it's kind of cool to like look at it as like, man, it's a, it's a small world. You know, like, like in that sense, like I get it. But, no thank you. Warner Brothers or Disney? I don't think in these terms, really. I guess Disney's got Pixar. Coco was amazing. Warner Brothers had something. I, I should probably think about this stuff more as somebody who like works in this industry, but like I just don't. I don't feel like it really matters. Marvel or DC? DC for the comics, Marvel for the movies, especially into the Spider-Verse. Although honestly with DC, I still don't really read many of their comics. I mostly read like smaller publishers. I think I read a lot of image. Uh, Lion Forge does a lot of good stuff. Their magnetic press stuff is really good. Um, I read a lot of, like, kind of one-shot stuff. I'm not really into the serial uh, superhero comics that much. Hershey or Nestle? Whichever one has Reese's. If you were a gladiator, what type would you be, slash what would be your weapon of choice? Uh, an American gladiator. And, uh, ju just a gun, dude. It might not impress anybody, but, like, I want to live. So this is a question from Gibson Twist. He's a independent uh, comic book writer, graphic novelist? What's the word for that? I, gu I guess author? comic booker? Way back when, like, at least a decade ago, I was, uh, writing this, like, Legend of Zelda fan comic, uh, that somebody else was drawing, because I, I can't draw. It was the unabridged, uh, Legend of Zelda Ocarina of Time, basically, so instead of, uh, cutting it faster, it's just, like, we just focused on, like, really minute details and dragged them out and, like, tried to pull comedy out of, uh, bizarre things. I think that was probably actually the best I ever did comedically as a kid. I would, I would make a movie out of uh, the unabridged Legend of Zelda Ocarina of Time before I made a movie out of Bum Pirates. Anyway, so on that site, I found some other comics, and one of them in particular really spoke to me as a, as a, uh, as a teenager, kind of coming to his own, kind of growing up. It was called Pictures of You, and uh, I've been reading that for about 10 years. It's actually getting close to finish. It's been something that he's been working on for a long time. Um, and it's been crazy to, like, see this develop and watch his art grow over the years and see how, as I go through, like, my actual, like, kind of coming-of-age experiences. So look back at this, you know, kind of coming-of-age comic and, uh, sort of draw those parallels. It's been really interesting. It's probably the most influential piece of work on my actual, like, development as an artist that nobody will know about. I support his Indiegogo's whenever he does like a print campaign for one of the books, because like I want to actually physically have the books. I think I actually lent out the Pictures of You books to a friend, but I do have one of the Our Time in Eden books right here, which is another series he was writing. Um, but the, he didn't draw this one. He draws and writes Pictures of You. Please go check him out if you have any passing interest. Let's see what this incredibly influential figure on in my life has to ask. Why is a can the butt, but cans is boobs? How could this happen? What is that I hear? Is that the sound of 2018? Wake up early, gotta stream with Miles, cause it just ain't Overwatch without a screaming child. Innovatively awful, he lost a speaking spell. How's he so bad at Tetris when he's holding all these L's? Bad at games, mercy means skin so thin it's cellophane. Makes a show and never follows through. Hello games. Yeah, you think that's bad? Oh, 
we go. You like to say you're three boys in a trench coat, but you're just a naked morad in a poncho. Urban cowboy with his hairline and escrow, stalking teen girls online like he was John Cho. Alright, I said that last thing because it was insulting, but, uh, not, not because it's true. It's not. Alright, man, that was good. That was awesome. All right, I'm gonna I'm gonna come back with my rebuttal right now. So let's uh, let's drop a sick beat. <coughs> what? Yeah. Yeah. Chris is a mess. He's always feeling depressed. Cause Todd Howard ASMR is his only success. Yeah. What? Got a handful of people coming to your streams, but you're feeling so bitter because they show up for me. Yeah. Oh god, oh god, no, um, st stop the feet, no, stop don't, the... don't worry about it. Like, I'm sorry, I didn't want to... No, I... dude, no, really, it's okay, it's okay, I'm just... I'm too I'm... far again, didn't I? I'm alright. I always do this, listen, no, I'm sorry, no, I'm sorry. It's not a thing, don't worry you know, about it, was... it's my fault. Congrats. No, on, you don't, you don't 20, have to, okay. 20, 20, subscribers, congrats, I'm, I'm gonna go, okay. No, no you don't have okay. to. I, I'm gonna go. Okay, I'm gonna... I, I, I appreciate it. There's not, there's not a there's not a door that way. Thank you for watching, everybody. Thank you for 2,000 subscribers. Thank you for asking questions. Thank you for just showing up. I don't do anything that I'm supposed to do to be successful on YouTube. I don't have like a regular series. I don't have regular upload days. I'm not really personality driven, which is a large part of YouTube channels these days. And yet somehow, there are some of you guys who have been watching this channel for like seven years. That's insane. I've probably influenced some of your development. And I got away with it. I also just want to give a big shout out to the people who uh, support me. Not just by watching or being in the content, but by helping sort out the stuff in my head. Tyler and Isaac and Miles and Chelsea and Max and Will and a couple others. Uh, they help a lot with finding the motivation to keep doing things. And uh, I really appreciate that. Anyway, I got a lot of big plans going into the new year uh, regarding this channel, and I hope that I hope that it adds something positive to your lives. All right, thank you for watching.